Welcome to Carbo Load. This is now Jacob. I changed my name. I'm not doing the rebranding anymore. And my name is Michael. I'm back. Yeah, Mike the Mike the bike. I called you that last episode in the description, so I okay. used to just call him that. Uh, yeah. So this is Carbo Load, season two, episode two. Hope you guys are doing well. Uh, so yeah, me and Mike are just going to talk about whatever. So, what do you want to talk about, Mike? Let's talk about life. Life itself. Where, where, where we're at. Let's do a recap. Do you talk about where you're at? Where I'm at? I'm yeah. at, like, just making YouTube videos that are also global, but also political to get more... More experiencing with video editing at the moment. Okay. But, yeah, I am trying to basically just create content, still get experience, so I'm able to do that. So if you have any global questions, I'm your guy now. I'm, I'm, I'm the, uh, the expert on that. What do you mean by global questions? Uh, so any global conflicts, I basically do research on. I see. So, so like, uh, like foreign... I mean, what's coming to my mind right now is like uh, Ukraine, Russia, Palestine, so Delta, I, that kind of thing. Yes, exactly, except I avoid the topics that everybody talks about, like Ukraine and Palestine and stuff like that, just because everybody already talks about that, so I figured it doesn't need as much coverage. Interesting. I'm like... Because it's like, yeah, everybody everybody already talks about those two things. All right, there's three main political uh, news things that everybody's talking about. It's, yeah, the Ukraine, Russia, Israel, Palestine, and China and the United States with the Taiwan. Uh-huh. Those and are the now, three main things. No, I have a question. I wonder what you think. So what I've, yeah. uh, what, what I've learned, and this is just the way that, like, Google and YouTube operate is that the topics that everyone else is talking about, those trending topics are exactly what you should be talking about if you want to grow a channel and you want to become trending. Because even though you, you're, you feel like you're not contributing, you're still contributing your perspective, right? And so you might want to talk about different things like in your niche and that's fine. But just for the purposes of like growth, like you still got. Uh, it's my understanding that you still got to like, go to where the attention is. But I'm also not really super big in the videos or film or videography. Respectfully, I disagree. Just because there are a lot of news channels that cover the same so topics, and it just uh -huh. gets hammer. They're hammering in the nail a little too much, in my opinion, and then it gets a little too boring to the point where it's like okay we get what the topic you're talking about we know the conflict we understand everything and now you're giving us a day-by-day -day feedback of this and then it's just like mm -hmm. well what if there's another topic that is also important that people aren't as interested in because there's not enough coverage for that yeah and i think that because all of the bigger news outlets are covering the main issues you know I mean, I only think they're main because they're so covered by them. But also, you know, there's other interesting things going on in the world that nobody talks about because it's not covered by a lot of major news outlets. So I'm basically just trying to cover, like, yeah, what everybody else isn't doing right now. That's fair. Uh, I guess it could be more difficult to compete with, like, major news outlets. They're pretty... Yeah. It's my it's, just my it, perspective that major news outlets are very in the business of uh, suppressing independent journal journalism. And I've seen a lot of just stuff that the the major news outlets are putting out, and it's like it's going to be about topics that relate to previous articles that they've put out or previous news articles. So they make a story, so they make a cohesive narrative. And that involves sticking to what they're talking about and not verging and like going to a different country. The mainly I'm trying to go to a different country to learn about the culture, but also like if hey, if it involves that specific conflict, 
then yeah, like, say like, I did two videos. One video was about Georgia. I don't know if you know the country Georgia. Yeah. Yeah, so there, that video I did on Georgia, the specific narrative was focused on the Russian refugees that were leaving Russia because they did not agree with the Ukraine conflict. So they went to Georgia because they were opposed to the war. And the Georgians, they didn't like the Russians because their interpretation was all Russians are bad because they're trying to start a conflict with Ukraine. So they were actually kicking out the Russians from Georgia. So there was a conflict there, and then I thought that was interesting because it was just like even though everybody is necessarily like, you know, there's the Russians who are leaving are doing like they just want to do the right thing. They're getting hate because of that, but also it's like, yeah, like that's that's an interesting like that's what I wanted to bring up. Like it's not it, it's yeah. a different perspective on the conflict. Now it's not just yeah, it's, Ukraine and Russia. Me. That does surprise me. That to one, like Georgians. Russian, to my knowledge, Russians do not have the same animosity uh, towards foreigners, like even Americans. Yeah. Like if you were, to, if, like, if I were to go visit like St. Petersburg, Moscow, like, the, as long as I'm not like doing anything like uh, politically or making my uh, like too much, drunk too much. Make sure to you're myself. not the main political opponent to Putin, or you'll, you'll yeah, get assassinated. Yeah, yeah, yeah. As long as you're not doing anything like, as, some, as long as you're not like trying to draw too much attention to yourself or break too many like social norms, like you're. That was the recent news headline, by the way. Uh, one of the main Putin. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. I'm just making uh, the audience at this point probably doesn't know who we're talking about. Uh, I forgot his name, but at this Alex point where we're, yeah, he, Al- Alexi, some maybe, maybe I don't know. I don't but know. Like, I mean, Putin, I, I, Putin has killed all so, so many fucking political opponents who can count, who can keep track anymore. It's, mm. it's kind of sad, but um, right. Yeah, for for the most part, what I've heard like from Americans that have like uh, reported on like traveling to like Moscow and Saint Petersburg like in the past year. Is that like they don't have that same animosity? Like, so they might some Russians would might be like curious about like your perspective as an American, um, about like the but, conflict yeah. or just like the world or politics back home. There but, are. Uh, they're, they're not going to be like you're an American, you're evil, you're sponsoring a proxy war, blah blah blah. It, a lot of like you know Putin is like also like you know trying to brainwash his like you know citizens into thinking like it's certain narrative. Uh, but that could be saying said for the same like about the United States, but to a lesser extent yeah. since we have a lot of freedom with social media and their social media is actually really restricted. So yeah. that's the only real difference. But also, I'm, I'm mainly speaking like, yeah, like in this conflict, like Putin's lying about a lot of certain things, and that's just my perspective as an American. But it could be wrong. Yeah. But I mean, yeah. I don't think brainwashing in Russia is is really that effective because, like, even in like Soviet times, it was they a case along of with it. I forget where I read this quote. It was some like Russian novelist, I think, said this. It was like uh, they lied to us. And we know they lie, and they know we know they lie, but we pretend anyway. <laughs> and that's kind of wow, how. Wow, that's it deep. Goes. Yeah. Like yeah. it's the like the like Russians know about their corruption. Like they know about uh, what's going on. They, I know. I've listen. I so I made two posts. One about Russia and Georgia, and Ukraine. The other one was about the China Taiwan conflict. Yeah. And the, I, I will the, say Putin does have a lot more genuine support than Americans in the West would like to believe, though. Especially yeah, the conservative you, Russians. They do like him. Because he, he has a lot of marketing. I was talking about, he loves Putin. He does a lot of marketing, and it's, it's, it's funny what they like do for Putin. Well, they it's, like, it's not that. They don't. It, it's not that they like everything he does or that they think that it's not that they don't think he's a liar or that he doesn't or they buy all the propaganda it's not that it's they like how he runs the country because Russia is still uh, like Putin's not the only corrupt guy in Russia Putin wasn't in power 
it's it's like uh, another like uh, some, something I read was like that basically Russia is like a, a den of snakes, essentially. And you and had we, Stalin yeah. come in, and he was a snake to basically re- 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 reel in and keep all the other snakes in order so that nobody kills anybody and so they could actually try to like catch up with the West. And that's kind of what Putin has been doing. Like he is in control of the situation. He keeps Russia in order. And, and conservative Russians especially will great like really appreciate him because they have a, Russia has a very strong national identity. And Putin is very you even like talk about from his interviews, this is not propaganda. He is very like pro Russian national identity. He's very like he you can tell he really like believes in like the, the cultural values he wants to protect and a lot right. of russians like uh, feel for that even though they know he is still a corrupt killing political opponent it's like no one's like buying this propaganda bullshit and least, yeah like, i agree and i don't mean to make parallels about the united states but i see the same thing with you know trump and I, the only reason I bring that up is that, like, I think he may lie about certain things to say that, you know, he may agree with certain topics. I don't think he agrees. I think he's just saying things to get voters. And maybe I'm saying that about Putin specifically. Like, yeah. Yeah. Putin is bringing up topics that will gain a better ov- audience for conservatives so they'll vote for him or they'll keep him in power. They don't vote because he's always in power but i mean like they'll be happy with him because he has said publicly that he supports those things and yeah i mean like i would say it's not just what he says it's what he does because in the the culture in russia from, from an outsider's perspective and from like my like my russian friend like russia feels very safe it feels very orderly. You don't have like a lot. There's not a lot of crime. You you don't feel like people are going to harass you. I was, so I, I was, my friend was living in New York at the time when I was visiting him last. Uh, I was I don't remember what I think it was. Uh, when, when did I, I? I told you I was there. I think it was in like September or October. Um, and, New York City. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I went to. Uh, we were getting like some burger uh, somewhere, like a like a smash burger or something. I don't know. I, I go to the bathroom. I'm in there like thirty seconds, max. I, I, I like just walked in there. I start hearing someone banging on the fucking door, like these three women, and they're like shouting, causing like a ruckus, being like, "Get out! Get out! Get the fuck out! I need to pee!" Like just in public. It's not giving a fuck. It's, it, and that's like a cultural thing of New York, where people are just kind of loud and obnoxious like that. And he says, in Russia, that shit never happens. Ever. I was in 7-Eleven. Some homeless dude came up and started, like, yelling at me, like, telling me I'm a pussy, like, threatening me, trying to, me, trying to get me to give money. In Russia, never. Never happens. Because they don't tolerate that. You could you could argue about See, there's like different morality there because what would really ha- the reason why it doesn't happen is because if someone tried to do that they would get arrested for like disorderly conduct or something. Which is also like there's that level of like okay maybe Russia is a little more hardcore because it's like maybe a homeless person is just begging for a change and yeah. instead of being able to do that they get arrested in Russia. Well, but it's, it's like ex- I don't know if it's that extreme but it's not just Russia but, like you can think of another yeah. country like Singapore. Uh, okay. Singapore is famous for having very harsh drug laws. It's also famous for being one of the safest countries in the world. But if you do drugs right. there, that's okay. punishable by death. They don't fuck around. You could leave a million dollars on the floor, people say, and it'll, people will not touch it. Is that that's related to religion? Like, doesn't give a shit. They will. They is that will related to religion at all? Uh, that I don't know. It could be. I'm sure some of it is. Um, I mean, you, you could look at the U.S. The U.S., you, we may not want to think about it, but the U.S. is one of the most religious countries in the world. We have the highest, I, I believe we still have the highest Christian population uh, in the world. It, we have, like, the Bible Belt. So, 
specifically I, I I'm just talking about some some hardcore Muslims that also do not appreciate the use of alcohol or I know a lot of different Muslim countries do not use alcohol at all mm. and to that extent I am talking also about drugs drug use with Muslim countries and I, I just saw that Singapore is various religions but Muslim makes up a significant portion so with yeah. that like yeah uh, I mean this stuff is always difficult to talk about because like this is an issue yes. in the US right now with immigration because you've got one end of the spectrum where they're saying like hey these people are seeking asylum uh, and then like I think in New York recently there was this uh, this political uh, issue of like uh, there were, I think it was like a number of migrants basically assaulted a police officer you've probably heard about this uh, the police officer got assaulted they got the migrants got brought to court they got let off nothing happened to them and they're seen like flipping off the cameras on the way out and it's like what the fuck they're just like blatantly disregarding the law in that regard and we're allowing that you know whereas a lot of other countries they don't tolerate that shit. They don't give a fuck what your story is or how harsh it was back home or what brought you here or if your child just got like hurt or if you were just trying to feed your family. They don't care. The law is the law. They don't fuck around with that shit. And they will – in that you, it's a different perspective. You, some people may feel that we should be more lax with the laws. Other people want to – will trade that freedom for, safe, for the safety. Of having these strict right. laws and that law enforcement, and a lot yeah. of people appreciate that more. Yeah, but it's like, yeah, I mean, yeah, like they're being restricted in other countries, but is that necessarily right to do? And it's like, well, that's you that's know, a value judgment. You there's you can have freedom or safety. You trade a certain amount of freedom for safety. Yeah, and there's an argument when when you so right now I'm in Latin America, right? Like. Yeah. They have the opposite issue. There is a lot of freedom here. There's a lot of freedom. Laws are a suggestion. And the police force right. is like... In Brazil, in Guys, Rio, the police is pretty strong in most places. He's, like, he's, in, uh, he's in Brazil strong. right now, by the way, guys. Oh, yeah, yeah. I'm traveling in South America. It's in yeah. Medellin, the police force, they don't get paid nut shit. It's like a hobby, if anything. They don't really do anything for any crimes short of like trying to find like the organized crime that are like killing people uh like any kind of petty crime they don't care about really like trap about it they don't they don't give a shit you have a lot of freedom in these countries you really do like you can you probably buy a machine gun if you wanted to but you trade that for lacking hugely lacking safety whereas yeah other countries you may feel like the police is really oppressive and they could be but you're safe and here they can the police can still be oppressive a lot some in Medellin the is the police is famous for committing crimes against foreigners like they'll uh, like entrap them because they can get away with it yeah it so along with that is like so many different things considering like also like you know if there's just targeting foreigners too i mean like i'm just thinking of like they can come up with anything but wouldn't also like the home country like to the united states if something happened to you like the united states would only intervene if like you're a politician or a government official right well, or like i don't know about that the united states has a pretty good reputation for for trying to take care of its citizens and, and trying to intervene yeah yeah, but other countries maybe not so much lately. Not but all right. But, so the point being, there's some good and some bad, but also specifically, yeah, like you can get away with some things in other countries and not in others, and yeah, uh, the freedom. Yeah, my my the, perspective is that I feel like this discussion about freedom versus safety is a it, there. It, it exists on a spectrum, and you can there's there's yeah. a balance you need to find. And I feel but like when it, I feel like yeah. in the West, it's becoming extremely political. It's well, extremely when there's political. there's certain like and we're specifically certainly like specifically in the West, like the United States, there's a lot of like 
like we don't permit drugs that cause harm to our bodies and when you're talking about countries that allow those drugs then it's like yeah that should be a freedom that should be revoked because they're causing harm to themselves they uh, are some people unknowing argue differently if you go to Amsterdam they're illegal yeah i mean i know there's the suicide booth now or wherever that is and where i can't remember where that was they created a suicide booth officially i don't know about that i know in Medellin, it was, which is Medellin is a very interesting country because it, it wait, 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 you're talking realize, when you say Medici, you're you're talking about Colombia, right? You're not yes, talking. Yes, yes, yes. So yeah. something that's interesting is it made me realize that what we consider, like uh, the, the words like conservative or liberal, mean very different things depending. On it was the in Switzerland. Switzerland has the suicide booth. Sorry. Ah, so, so it, liberal and conservative like politics mean very different things depending on the country you're, you're talking about. Because yeah, Colombia, it's a deeply Catholic country. Um, they usually vote right wing on most things. And yet you look at their laws, they're not really enforced, and they actually have very quite liberal laws. They have, uh, they legalize prostitution. Um, they will uh, legalize uh, euthanasia. So you were talking about suicide booths, kind of why that came up. Like how, how did, yeah. you know, abortion, abortion is legal, very lax abortion laws. So how does a deeply Catholic sort of country like condone like euthanasia uh abortion etc it, it it becomes because they still like to them even though they're like very catholic they uh they believe that that's just not the government's role that the government doesn't really have the right to like ever tell you what to do with your body but with drugs they will uh, they generally try to take a hard stance against that um because of the uh like long history of like violence in the past few decades so then yeah that's associated with like yeah there's gang wars associated with that but like right for your body then yeah that's very interesting how there's like all these other things you can do with your body you give it is your body but it's like yeah when drugs is involved i know specifically when it's we're talking about like you know marijuana in the united states like in the last episode, we were actually talking about how marijuana was used to regulate or, like, honestly, like, stop the growth of minority groups. Because, yeah, you didn't know that? I think we're talking about... I I, th- I think what you might be referring to is uh, the Regan's War on Drugs. Yeah, yeah. That was or also was about Nixon. marijuana. Yeah. Was it, or is it Nixon? It might have well, been Nixon, it, actually. But it, it was, was basically all, it, was, it was all drugs. It's because you, they, they recognized criminalized that. marijuana by... because they they wanted to stop minority groups from getting like growing in yeah. whatever. I, like, I wouldn't say it was so much minority groups. It was more so uh, like uh, left wing groups. They're well, they're they were still trying. Like, it, it was like, still a large was, minority group. Yeah, I mean, was... minorities just happen to be within the low left wing primarily as they are today. Yeah, there was like, another reason we talked about it. It was also because of, like hemp also being paper, and that was another reason because the paper industry didn't want to stop hemp, and hemp was another thing that could easily replace paper, so then that's also like another reason. But, you know, the main reason I'm bringing up it is because it, people stopping drugs in general compared to other laws, that's why I was bringing it up, because mm-hmm. they want to stop a specific group. And then maybe that's why they initiated those specific drug laws in, uh, I don't know what, I forget what country you were talking about, but that specific country, maybe it was just to regulate like a certain group in that country yeah. and yeah. not like uh, other. I, I, I don't know if, if drugs would be legal in Colombia had it not been for, you know, Mr. Uh, Pablo Escobar. I mean, yeah, because it's a lot of the econ- ec- economy is like also like driven from illegal black market stuff and it's just like that people in power are able to make decisions and uh, yeah. that dictates a lot yeah. so then that's also influencing why like drugs are more you know prominent in different countries because it was more established there so then that also like dictates what, that what do you think about uh all drugs being legal no that just shouldn't be the case it's just people are making people pe- the the basic human is is, is stupid to be fair, to be completely frank, 
the basic uh-huh. human it does not have the intelligence to understand and maybe if maybe all right well hang on if they had to go through a seminar and understand the exact things that are going to happen to you when you take that drug, maybe it's a huge, like literally, a, I want a very thorough list of what will actually happen to you when you take that drug. Wow. Then you have to see somebody like visibly taking it. And then afterwards, if you're like, okay, after all of that, and I'm going to get addicted and I'm going to get like heart disease. Okay, I want to do it then then yeah if if you know what's actually going to happen but normally that kind of regulation isn't going to be the case just because it's like it's just right now in the, in the society we live in it's Why either going to be nice? like because like Sorry. what what i'm talking about is like very thorough i got what i want is very yeah. thorough i want it to be so, like a like you so mentioned you, everything Dr- the drug have- well, that do the drug, legalized. the drugs aren't tested as enough enough as I want it to be for it to be legalized. That's also what I meant. Like, that's fair. Like, I want it to be like in and well, out. Actually, like, no, it's not fair. I disagree completely with that. Drugs, yeah, because most recreational drugs, they most recreational drugs are very natural. Like cocaine well, is like, a plant. Like uh, mushrooms, but, like. It's, All right. it's mushrooms, weed, it's plant, tobacco, well, it's a legal one. Like you don't know most... the main, you don't know the long term effects of marijuana, and that is actually like a drug that doesn't kill you. Well, but I, that's one I don't of... know. I mean, to me, these drugs, these are natural. They've been around for thousands of years. They've no, they've no, been, no. Like, they... Thousands of yeah, like they've been around for thousands of years. It's just there hasn't been research about those drugs. <laughs> And it's I, just I like documented I cases. I'm surprised that there wasn't much research. But, uh, it's well, if there's like some research, it's just not as documented as I would like, considering we're in like the, the present age right now, like where there's a lot yeah, of things I, more documented. I'm just talking I, about like. Yeah, you know. but I mean, like, we use. I, I feel like there's more research on that than like. I, I don't want to... What drugs? I don't, I don't know if I want to talk about this because it's a very controversial subject. Um, but it's just, but uh, we, I think we probably have more research on the effects of cocaine on your body than we do the COVID vaccine. Well, obviously, the COVID vaccine was very recent, so that does make sense. Yeah. yeah. But we still gave yeah. it to everybody. Uh, well, still that's because we actually back. needed it, but also, you know, the point being that, like, yeah, the COVID vaccine is a lot safer long-term than COVID. I honestly... Yeah, like we don't know that. We don't know that, but also it seems like it'll be a lot from our perspectives. Two people who have very little experience with, like, I mean, I assume you have very little experience with vaccine and cocaine. Uh, yeah. But I'm just saying that, yeah, we're probably it's cocaine is gonna be a lot worse. I don't know when they started all the cocaine. Uh, studies and stuff like that but based on the information we have presently everybody has come to the conclusion that yes it is a lot more it's it's addictive it's it's like that's not everybody not, all right I, uh, i'm generalizing got, listen got listen got I, that have these drugs completely legal i'm Burn. generalizing i'm generalizing but i'm also stating that like yes cocaine is bad for you in a lot of regards like it's addictive and maybe and certain countries don't counter, care of it being addictive i would well, also i'm just talking about addictive that, in this case but like yeah, i'm going to I would continue also counter a lot of these hard drugs we're talking about yeah are are less harmful and less addictive than uh legal drugs that we have now alcohol tobacco they nicotine Long-term, yes, but we know, we, know, we know those drugs are are damaging. We are often much more damaging than we uh, don't know the long-term, long-term effects of a lot of those actual drugs, except for alcohol, which we know long-term is the worst. Which just that being the case tobacco, is they, tobacco they, they is being tobacco is actually being restricted. You know that's actually being mm-hmm. prohibited. It's slowly because it's already been a thing, and that's part of a culture, and that's. You know, you could argue that as another, like, argument. It's a part of a culture, which I guess you could make as an argument for a drug. It's just a part of their culture. But 
what I'm saying is like, yeah, like in my book, in my perfect world, you can do whatever you want as long as you have an, a, a huge list, a huge video, and you need to go through that, and you need to fully understand like what it takes to take that drug and what's going to come of you based on after doing it because it honestly like when people take drugs they don't know what's going to happen they just take it and they're like okay my friends are doing it it's a social pressure which that's another aspect of it there's a social pressure it's like oh i take i'm just taking this test i don't care what i don't i watch this video the seminar about it but then there's this social pressure where it's like, oh, all my friends are doing it. Oh, fuck. Oh, I well, guess I have to do it now. So I would actually make the case that I would, uh, I would legalize drugs, but only certain ones. Yeah. Natural ones. Natural ones, I think, are all fine. I think shrooms, cocaine, marijuana, so, all fine. I have a problem. There, need, with there still needs. Place. Yeah. There. There. So yeah. Obviously, the the opioid crisis in in China and yeah. or. Oh, yeah, oh, they're... Opi- because opioids they're not natural. They're, well, I don't like using the natural argument because there are things that are natural that are bad for you and things that are not natural that are very good for you. Um, but opioids extremely addictive. We know that, and plus, it doesn't actually cause any uh, benefit to you other than just like getting like high. I guess like it's it just makes you sleepy. Like people take it to like take the edge off because they're stressed and they just want to like not feel anything, and. But like, I'm sorry, but a person on cocaine can be a very productive person. But uh, yeah, it's, coke, coke is fine. Like, they're very, they're very successful people that do use cocaine, bro. It's a stimulant. Like, it's go, a stimulant, but it already it's... work. You ever see Wolf of Wall Street? The man like does the line of coke, and then he stands up and he's like, yeah, and he's ready to take on the world. You know, like it's 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 just there's detrimental effects to your body that are. are coming from you taking that and it's like yes there's, you feel that, that energy burst eating a hot dog there's just and yes the, they're accelerated when you take cocaine it's a lot worse when you take like cocaine specifically like you actually get oh. more addicted it's not like you're gonna get addicted to hot dogs and you're gonna be like oh i need to take a hot dog every yeah. five seconds like mm, cocaine is completely different it's like i mean have you had the issue of like eating too many hot dogs recently? I don't know. Thing, like, it, like the, it's, the, it's just not I, comparable. I, I will tell you, I've I've not met a lot of coke addicts, and I've not I've not. If I've I don't think you've met any people, serious ones, if anything. I've, like you've I've met, met people, people that I've met people that seriously do coke and that deal coke, and I've never seen them as unproductive members of society. I have seen heroin addicts and. Um, opioid addicts and the only places where I see them are at the hospital or methadone clinics and they're usually they're often homeless unemployed etc okay so you were saying that like yeah cocaine addicts or cocaine sellers are like productive members of society yeah yeah like they they're still totally productive they can walk the day and define listen like, listen the, they may it's look okay. productive in that instance, but they're not going to be like maybe, – maybe they are going to be in the next couple of days. Maybe they are. But long-term side effects well, outweigh the how they're doing right now. Cocaine is but metabolized very, very quickly. Like it, you, it makes you high for like, like minutes. Okay, then if it lasts minutes, then how are you productive for that many minutes? You're just productive for 10 minutes, and then you're, you're saying that's the well, reason why so. they're so productive? No, 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 no. I'm not saying that they are productive because of cocaine. I'm saying they're productive in spite of it. I think, but like, that's a bad argument because they are just productive people to begin with, and then they well, also do cocaine. Are, well, people drink alcohol and they can maintain a happy, healthy, productive life. They can yeah. smoke weed and, well, not so much weed. Uh, no, there's still people that can actually do like weed that are still productive, but it's just like it's still yeah. detrimental to their main yeah. long term health. I would actually, I would actually, if I was going to make a business deal with someone, I would trust them more. Ideally, no drugs, but I would trust the man that does coke more than I would trust the man that does weed. Because the dude that does that, coke. What, did you watch Breaking Bad? You saw dude, two co. You saw one image of two co. When I think of a man that does weed. I think if someone is trying to like veg out, take the edge off, get high, lay back on the couch, play Fortnite, 
not really give, like lose all their games, like not give a fuck. And that's just kind of they just want to like that's how they relax. When I think so, of Man does Coke, it's like they're bored and they want to feel like they're gonna they can take on the world for a few minutes. <laughs> that doesn't sound like a very done. strategic. That doesn't sound like done. a strategic. Uh, that sounds like putting all your money in the stock market for five seconds well, and seeing how it goes. Business deal. I'd rather take the guy that just wants to feel like they're on top of the world for a few minutes. But they're just risky. They don't. They don't. They don't know. They don't even trust themselves at that moment because they're just taking a risk with the mindset they're in right now, like. You know, like someone who's on weed is a little more trustworthy. No, they're I not. feel at they're least gonna they're just gonna sleep. And, and they're just gonna and they, sl- no, no. They're taking weed because they're no. they're conscious and they actually they're are cognizant. No. They're taking weed and they're playing Fortnite and they're I, I don't know how Fortnite ranks you or whatever. Fuck, they're at the bottom tier because they lose every fucking game because they're always high. You know why? Because they know that the real I, battle I, is winning I money play, and not I, I playing I play a stupid Legends, game. Right? And I was a great League of Legends player. I was like in the top 1% for a hot minute. I, I bet you didn't smoke weed then. I bet you no, did cocaine. I was, I, I was... Dude, if I did coke, I would have I done pro. Like, Listen. I was on top of shit. All right. Like, I Listen, a, I... I'm just making fun of I'm just making fun of your metaphors or your connections of like saying Fortnite for this uh, comparison, and that's mainly why I'm just saying this. But it's like, you know, you can be productive and do like cocaine. It's just not a long term solution. Maybe it'll help you in the moment. It's just not, not going solution. to help. It isn't. A, it isn't about solution or the moment. It's just they're bored. They want to do some coke. Same way. That's some folks. Some folks get I, bored and. Wanna, Listen, if if you're saying if you want to do a drug to be productive, and I thought you were saying that for Adderall. cocaine, if Adderall, that's a different story. I would, I would trust a man on Adderall with my life. Yeah, I mean that's just like that makes you like mean. Well, like what's the guy? What's the difference between a guy that does Adderall like every single day though, than compared to one well, that I, does it Adderall like every is week? Poor man's cocaine. Okay, but, like, I'm talking about someone who overdoes it too much, and that's the same for, like, somebody who does cocaine too much. Do you trust the guy that does cocaine too much or the guy that does Adderall too much, or do you want the guy that does... I'm saying is, I trust the man that uses their stimulants. Just, yeah, but, like, compared to, like, somebody who does less stimulants compared to a lot of stimulants. Because now you're just talking about a depressant versus stimulant, and you're favoring the stimulant. But I'm talking about even more stimulant... All right, what about, like, even more stimulant to less stimulant? Who do you favor that? Um, I mean, it, 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 it's not really a factor. Uh, it, it, it's, it's really you think it's the factor. same? You think that, like, people, someone who's about to, like, who's taking well, so it, much it, cocaine right now, they it, think it, I, they have a sound mind? It, it doesn't matter. I'm not, like, if you're on that high end of the spectrum, like, I don't really think that affects your productivity that much. What if you're not on that high of the spectrum? Like you're just like you're just like you know you're, you're overdoing. You're like taking if so you're, much. If you're, if you're low on the spectrum, I can hold that against you. I'm like, okay, he doesn't do coke, great. But it's like, oh yeah, at least he's doing coke and not like one of those depressants. It's like, yeah, exactly, exactly. What exactly, do you mean? Yes, yes, yes. Like if no, he's doing, then... like, like if he's if he's like drinking in his room alone, or smoking weed alone, then. Just, just to like make themselves pass out. So then, like, there's a lot of yeah. different factors when considering something like that because you can. What are you saying? Like now, since you said like, just for the fact that you said like, no, no one has ever failed. Like, no, no, no one's ever flunked out of school from using to from using stimulants. You sure about that? Also, I'm talking about now that you said alone and you said. Oh, if you're alone, that dictates. What if you do cocaine alone? Does that make you immediately ten times better than someone who does weed alone? Because yes. I would disagree that just because you're doing 100%. a drug alone, that does. You're doing cocaine alone. How is that going to benefit you then? If Finding you're doing cocaine alone. Top of the world. Are you going to start a business? Are you going to be an inter- entrepreneur just because you're doing cocaine alone? I mean, like. Maybe maybe if you were like arguing like Pablo it's more Escobar of a social aspect or something, but like I don't understand you you, you wanting to do it like. Did it. He was one of the wealthiest, most successful people in the world. 
Dude, he, he's that's not the type of person you want to be. If you want to look at the top billionaires of the United States, like <laughs> you could do that instead. But it's like Pablo Escobar is not somebody who sh- you should use as an example for who like you should use. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, the Colombians wouldn't like me for saying that. I don't even know. Is pa- Pablo Escobar is he was part of the Mexican cartel or where was he? Like part of the he, he was Colombian. Colombian? Cartel. Colombian cartel. By, okay, so you're by, you're gonna get assassinated right now. By by today's standards, with the amount of money he amassed back then, he would be the richest man in the world. He was like, extremely powerful. Yeah, but like, it was still a dangerous. Like he, it's it's not the most beneficial. He, it's not. He's he's like he's viewed he's viewed like like Americans would view Osama bin Laden. If you were to take a picture of his mental status, would you be like, yes, this is the mental status that I want. He is such a well-oriented, he knows so much about life. Dude, he was very organized. He is very methodical. He was the king of the drug business. Like, that, that shit didn't happen by accident. He went from nothing. He was the, probably one of the most successful businessmen that has ever lived. Was he happy he with himself? The government. <laughs> Dude, the government tried to arrest him. He made a deal where he could build his own prison, which is just like his private like resort home with like a big ass telescope where he could look down on the city, like some fucking Doctor Evil shit. And he built an escape tunnel in his prison for himself, so that once the government gets a little more powerful and tries to like take him out and arrest him and bring him to his own prison, he just goes out of the escape tunnel he built for himself in his own prison that he built. That, that, that was him. All right. yeah. He was a successful businessman. His only fuck up, well, he, he fucked up. He got assassinated by another like drug lord. <laughs> what happened? I'm he glad you mentioned that. Him. Can you talk to you? I'll, I'll like try to like a- Attack and like critique it afterwards, but like tell me what so happened. I don't know if it was drug lord he got assassinated by. It might have been a civilian. I don't know. He was not very well liked by a certain amount of the population, but he he was killed. I yeah. Well, that that's a, that's a factor alone on itself. It's like, could you imagine the mental state of someone like that and like say like, okay, yeah, he's probably such a good person. Like he's no, he's done he was, it all. Well, uh, he he was a controversial figure. I, I don't know how much you know about him. But I don't know too much, but what I learned basically was it, the population was kind of split because he was kind of like a Robin Hood esque figure. Like he would kind of like commit all of his crimes, but he would Did also he... like donate a lot to the poor. Oh, but he also built himself a prison that he could escape yeah, out like, of, and he was just like when, like when he died, There's... he had like he had like tens of thousands of people show up to his funeral when he died. Even though he yeah, was probably it. like people he, that was working under him and like no, I mean, like, yeah, like they viewed him as a All Robin right. Hood. Like the poor people loved him. I'm sure there were some people that viewed him in that light, but I also find the perspective that maybe they viewed him as this powerful figure, and if they don't show up, it would just be disrespectful because they viewed their entire lives as looking up to this person, even if he's yeah, been this I, I this evil that. figure. They're... I, I want to say that there was a lot of people that didn't want to show up. He was he was hated. He, the majority hate him. Well, yeah, yeah. The majority, the, the majority hated life. him, but there were still people that showed up, maybe out of like other reasons, like oh, I oh. have to show up, or maybe like I am obligated to because I supported him when he was alive and I liked him when he was alive. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. Or like maybe like you know they actually liked what he was doing, like helping out the community. He was that they were a part of but Mm -hmm. that speaking like someone like that like pablo escobar are you suggesting that he is the epitome of success in your book for like i'm saying that he is a very successful person if he i'm saying that if he was to you're saying so you're (laughs) saying he's so successful that if you were to have him be like the ceo of like a robot company or a rocket company. I feel like he'd be pretty good. Yeah, he'd do pretty great. All right. He's got organizational Maybe. business man, people management skills, man. This... But is that somebody you want to look up to to be successful? Is your image of Not successful? 
not look up. I don't look up to him. But I'm saying yeah. that, like, if you're choosing somebody to run a business for you, like your life depends on it. I, it's not a bad guy. It's not a bad. He sounds like off. somebody who would like. He's used to the environment he's in, and it's a toxic environment he's living in because there's a lot of gang warfare and cartels and illegal drugs oh, trafficking. I, I, I actually disagree with that. I think he lived in a very safe environment for himself because there was not really a police presence. Like during, Okay, like, well, that's another like, aspect of it. That's the, another aspect. Who's the top G? Like, there is no crime. You don't, com- you, don't, you don't commit crime against Pablo Escobar because they will find you. That's a, like a whole other aspect of it. So it was more authoritarian. Like he was, he basically became, he was a quote unquote entrepreneur in the aspect of illegal drug trafficking. Yeah. Yeah. I think the which, main thing, which became more powerful than the country. Too, he got too power hungry. He tried to take on the government essentially. Yeah. Which is just like, that's a whole other aspect of it. I'm just talking about, like, in general for, like, you know, he's not a person that should be looked upon and as for successful in any way. It's just someone who managed to thrive in a society or an area of the world where certain Mm. laws and regulations were not allowed, so he benefited from that. And I, I disagree. He was I, mean, able... I, I mean, I know I'm being quite controversial, but a lot of our most uh, – of our historical figures that we hold in most disdain are still one of – some of the most effective leaders in history. If you want to talk about Stalin, we hold him in disdain. He's, he, you can probably uh, hold him responsible for the deaths of millions of people and starvation in the satellite. Uh, yeah, wasn't it like 47 million or something? I don't know the exact numbers, uh, but you also have to factor in that before he came into power, Russia was massively behind the rest of the world. It was basically a feudal society with like warring oligarchs taking advantage of the Russian people. They were starving. Their number one export was grain, and yet their people were dying of famine. That was like the history of Russia. And then within ten years, he had two five-year plans. He rapidly industrialized made Russia a the second uh, superpower in the world in a matter of 10 years uh, he installed a lot of uh, unity and national pride in Russia and actually really formed it into the country that it is today so as a, even though we hold him in disdain he was easily one of the most effective leaders especially in the political climate and cor- that he was stepping into which was a very corrupt climate you can also talk about Mao in China. Uh, he basically unified China, killed millions of people, but he also unified China if, and made them the listen. powerhouse of the day. And also, with China being a communist state, even though they are communists, in the past uh, two decades, they have brought out, I think, it's, I don't even know what, it's like 70% of their population has basically been raised up from poverty. Because of their uh, because of their rule, we can you're, even you're talking talk... about numbers like today, you, yeah. even though you're talking about a different ruler, and then also like what are those ruler? What is that ruler saying right. specifically? It's, it's, it is they were excellent like, statesmen, is what I'm saying. They what the I'm net saying benefit for their people and their state was mm. astronomical. I mean, and may put place them in the competitive place they are in the world today. And we can even Listen. talk if we want to be really controversial. Talk about Hitler. Even U.S. presidents, I believe it was Reagan, said that he was an excellent statesman because he took a, a shithole impoverished country and raised it to be a global superpower that almost took over all of Europe. Listen, you're, I am just going to defend like every single country right now because like, you're, you're bringing up every single <laughs> like, <all> of them. <laughs> evil person in the world right now. Uh-huh. Everyone you mentioned is evil, and yes. the only reason they were effective was because they killed a bunch of people. 
that's not the definitive response for a good leader being effective. I know you're saying like, oh, they were being effective, well, were not, but it's like they were not effective because they killed people. It's that I, they walked into a situation. They walked they, they, into a situation where they, they killed a bunch they, of people. They, oh, they, they, did, they did what they thought was necessary and they did the best they could to try to to raise up the country and to protect people the best that they thought they Hitler, could. Hitler could have... Uh, listen, Hitler could have been a lot more efficient in, like, running the country. Instead, he just wanted to kill a bunch of people for no reason. He wanted to be just egocentric. I'm just saying, like, there's a lot of things that he could have done that could have involved killing less people. Killing less, yeah. like... Oh, and same for Stalin. And uh, I'm not – they're they're not efficient. Stalin, I'm, not like, so sure. I'm not so sure you can say that about Stalin because Stalin – What, because he had to starve out, out his, 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 his as population? Evil, as evil as you may – as we may want to believe he is. And there's – there some historians can debate whether or not he's – they like, he, he you're, you're telling me that like, yeah, he like brought everybody up to speed. He forced them to do that. Like – Yes. But you also have to consider that he was – Russia was a very politically corrupt uh, country, region. Some people wouldn't even want to call it country. You're, you're like, telling – the, the only thing that I'm hearing right now is that they were at the bare minimum and you just brought them – they were brought back to the top no, based on how they were. He walked into a den of a, – a den of snakes. Yes. Yeah, they were – yeah. In, better but, analogy is he walked into – basically a den of wolves and there's all the sheep and all the wolves are slaughtering their own section of sheep and doing and just looking out for themselves and stalin was the big wolf and he came in he brought all the other wolves in line some of the sheep died when he did that and he came in but he ended up bringing it up bringing up the country and bringing up the people and on the whole ended up causing a net benefit for the country now, I'm not saying what he did was morally right at all a lot of people died of course yeah. but as a statesman as a leader and considering the amount of corruption and just the politics that were going on there he, like, he was effective like what, what else could you have asked for Be, like because you, you could have you, asked for solving the situation peacefully instead how? of like how because they didn't have demo there, there was no democracy we're not going to come in with no West if, if the the other way that if we yeah that, like the just other bring way capitalism that, there I mean, yeah the, the other way that i can think of that we solve this is uh america comes in backs a coup and installs a pro-western uh leader to basically so, take over russia Basically, government. what I'm hearing is that because communism and the Russian atmosphere was so toxic, they had to deal with killing other political opponents. They had to deal with murdering people because well, not it was. Communism because it, 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 Russia was. You're saying you're you're Stalin. well. I'm just saying, like you know, it was better than dealing with what was already there, because. Apparently, it was just everybody attacking each other, and so, you know, they're kind of. being, I, yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's not necessarily that there was, it's that they're not, what there wasn't necessarily a peaceful way of doing this. So, that's the the system itself, that isn't really like, you know, the United States did it a yeah. peaceful yeah. way, but also... You can argue that the United States is not doing it in a peaceful way for other countries and for specific members of our society, if you were to say that. You haven't mentioned that, but I'm just saying I mean, that what, could the, be the case. The United, States? the United States is not peaceful. Exactly. The, the, the United States is, uh, is very – well, the United States is very good at committing crimes without looking – like they're responsible for that. Yeah, yeah, I agree with I, Haiti I, I, specifically, I even, and there's, there's a very long list of like coups that the U.S. that we we've, we've established. Had. Yeah, like but, in South America and the Middle East, especially. I'm like, just yeah. Prolific. 
I was just saying that to also bring, not that I'm, like, being a hypocrite by supporting the United States in that regard, but I'm saying that, like, yeah, there's been a lot of people that have been killed by Russia, and it's like, you're saying that they've been great leaders handling the situation when it's like the people didn't really have a choice in that, and in which case, anybody who's given power can also, like do a similar situation where they kill a bunch of people and also well, come on top and if, be efficient. If, if, if you're going to ask like, Russian people, which would they rather prefer? Because there, there's another way this could have gone down. There's another country I'm thinking of, which is actually very similar to what Russia used to be uh, like a, a hundred, two hundred years ago. We're going to talk about Nigeria. So Nigeria, as you probably know, it's famous for being a, a poor country. Uh, people like a large pop, percentage of the population lives on like less than a dollar a day all right nigeria is within the top 10 largest uh exporters of oil in the world there is no reason that that country should be poor there's no reason that should be underdeveloped or that people should be there's a lot of co- corruption the reason yeah exactly and that's what russia was because even though that their people are poor and starving they are still making a shit ton of money exporting all of their oil and goes into the hands of corrupt uh, officials. There have been something like, I don't even know how many coups there have been in Nigeria's history. I think it's like like 20 maybe. It's a, it, or I'm thinking of Haiti. But uh, they're, they're, they have a long history of military coups. That's basically what Russia was. It was a lot of power struggle and a lot of, a lot of the fallout of these power struggles came at the expense of the people. So Nigeria, yeah. a lot of these people are still living in a shithole. If you want to, you like, like, root out the corruption and establish a strong government and a strong rule of law in a country like that, that happens uh, through violence. It really is. It doesn't is. always have to happen that way, though. I can't think of any time in history that that hasn't been the case. We're what There's like something? Been and a group of men have said we've had enough, and we're going to uh, to go to war, and we're going to root out all these people. We're going to establish a strong rule of law. Root out all of these people is a very yeah. vague term that can be used to fit any circumstance. Root out the criminals. Root out the, root out the criminals. Root out like a group of people. Root out yes. like. So, like, what if there's an ethnic population of people that just believe differently? that bleed differently yeah uh, well again these do you establish a uh, all I believe that all governments have basically been established with a history of violence it's just how it goes well, yeah States, I mean obviously you yeah you, you can't but, you can't be wishy-washy about these shits like the, because but there's certain decisions like them. There's certain decisions that political leaders in the past have made that have just killed people for no reason. And I know you're saying they were effective in doing so, but it's like that wasn't the right call for, like, life itself. Like, they're ending lives doing Uh, that, you know? It depends on what perspective you want to have. If you have a utilitarian perspective, uh, a utilitarian moralistic perspective, then yes, it was. Because if we can look at South America where I am right now, they were uh, basically uh, invaded by the Spanish. They were uh, they became colonized. Oh, the Spanish were actually very ended up being probably one of the the best like uh, imperialists well, from a humanistic perspective, of, like far better. Out of like the, the the all of them being terrible, yeah. Well. The Spanish were the only ones that were actually like immediately putting in laws saying that they cannot enslave indigenous people and like legalizing marriage with indigenous populations to trying to like assimilate them in. Okay, but like yeah, like, like the, the, whereas that was that with uh, the British and the Americans, and we basically went in and said we're taking your land and we're killing you all. Yeah, but it's also like you know the the same deal with like you know. Spain only yeah. having a certain portion of the globe to conquer and they decided like okay this population will not be subjugated to that and then other countries just have different decisions yeah. about that but yeah, yeah like but, but still but still these countries didn't have to fight for their independence it's still they not did. right yeah they did. I know and yeah a lot of them did die and a lot of them did get enslaved anyway 
and a lot of them were, were treated poorly. But at the end of the day, if you look at them today from a utilitarian perspective, they did benefit from that colonialism. It brought them technology that they did not have. It brought them it medicine brought... that they did not have. It brought them That's a, true, a but... lot. But the, compare, it the government that they didn't have. Compare that to what the United States is today. And I always take that as a comparison for other countries that were colonized. We were a oh, country... Yeah, the United States had the technology first. We fucked them. You know how Panama used to be a part of the Colombia, Colombia, Colombian Republic? But yeah, but US we took it. came in yeah. and we decided we wanted to finish the Panama Canal Yeah. for economic reasons. And we basically encouraged Panama to split from Colombia so that we could basically... But right, to me, yeah. Panama is basically like like a, a colony of the U.S. It's a super we, Yeah, I know. We, we, we need that we so we could do first. a less... Yeah. but I, I, I had to fly through there and I learned that Panama doesn't actually have its own currency. They use the American dollar. That makes sense, yeah, just because it's like that whole... Uh, thing that I happened but also just because they have their own currency but it's back a lot of people don't yeah one to one right right but I'm, I'm i was just saying like yeah like other countries like you know uh, yeah like they can any country can use like whatever currency they want to right now it's just like it's you know it's also enforced because like you know the united states had the panama canal like under enforcement that yeah. You know, they, they kind of, like, guarded that and, like, made it their I'm own. The so it's, like, you know, it's not really that fair for other countries that are, like, you know, doing stuff. But, you know. Yeah. Well, fair is relative because even though we benefit a lot from that, you can argue about how it's corrupt and how we're interfering with with their statehood and their their cultural identity and whatever. Yeah. At the end of the day, it made Panama... The, one of the wealthiest countries in South America. I believe they have the highest GDP per capita this of any is, country in South America. But it's like, if you compare that to the United States, and it's just like, yes, okay, this is what the United... the the What colonization could have been, and then it's like, okay, now it's like all the other co- countries that were colonized, and it's like, yes, oh, they're not doing as good. More, we benefited the most. Lots as opposed to if we didn't do yes it. but they also could have benefited even greater th- i know what you're saying like but they could have benefited even greater than what they ah, did why we don't need to, why do we need to be fair we're the ones bringing in the technology what were they going to finish their their canal on their own i mean you don't know they could have they didn't have the if, technology they didn't have the know-how they could no. They could have done like a lot of other things. Like I'm not just talking about Panama specifically. I'm talking about just like other countries in general. Like the way they turned out, it's because of how they were treated, or like you know, we were able to get our independence a lot sooner than a lot of the other South American countries. That impacted us. Like we were able to get a head start, and then we were able to take advantage of all the other countries. Yeah. And that have led you, us have you ever to like. Read- have you ever read uh, Jerry Diamond's book Guns, Germs, and Steel? Yeah, I've heard. I've heard of it. I haven't. I've read like parts of it. It's pretty nice. Yeah. It's pretty interesting. Yeah. You, you understand it, basically it, what it, what his whole his whole uh, rationale behind why the world ended up the way that it did. Why? Geography. Because geography was just the way that. it was. Yeah. Yeah, because if you look at Europe. The reason why things developed so quickly in Europe was because Europe lies along a very steady east-west axis. So a country in Europe is going to ha- be like it's going to be kind of smushed on this narrow like field of like a latitude, and because of that, they're able to more specialize in the, their labor. If they want to like be like have agriculture, become an agricultural society, they can kind of do that. Now contrast that with South America. South America is very much like a, it runs more along a, a vertical axis. There's a lot of mountains. So you, you're just talking about longitude versus latitude, and that di- dictates like that you're, you're more. Factor. Because if yeah. you if you're a country, it like spans along like a very like long like vertical length. Well, the southern part there's, of your state 
is going to be uh, adept at many at, at different things than the northern part. So, so what you're what you're referring top. to is is also the main prime example you're referring to is Africa because Africa is built into so many different like actual temperate yeah. zones. Yeah. yeah. However, yeah. Africa yeah. is oh, the yeah. I mean Europe Europe is the same zone throughout, so that makes it more beneficial. However, yeah. for South America's perspective, I'm just bringing this up because you're mentioning something that also is in conflict with like Brazil has the Amazon rainforest, which functions oh. as something that also blocks crops. It also blocks people from building houses. There's also the the mountain range that uh, the what is it? I, the yeah, Andes. Yeah, the Andes mountain range that also blocks crops from being built in certain areas. So it's not just about climate. The Andes, if if memory serves. Yeah, but it's like there's a lot of different stuff, and then yeah, where there's that there's the Panama Canal. There's also this area where it's like thick jungle that nobody can cross. That it's like also like that's an area where nobody can go through. So it's like people from South America can't easily go to the United States yeah. just because of that one area. Well, the but, other major thing, part of what happens with like this geography difference is you have a different culture. Because if there's – That's built on – yeah. But the yeah. Pe- if, it's, if it's super hot up in the northern part of, your, of this, uh, this region, those people are going to have different clothing. They're going to have a different way of gathering food and supporting their families and living than people uh, that are over in the mountains and people that yeah. are over in the jungle and people that are a little bit south of you where it might be colder during the uh, during the uh, like the summer months or like the, the June months uh, um, contrast with uh, the with Europe like if you're all kind of living in, this, in a similar landscape you're more likely to have a culture you're more likely to be able to form a national identity and like work together and divide up labor and actually try to like excel. Whereas, and right, but like they were still, they're yeah. all fucking warring tribes to this day. There's still a lot of like people like in Europe that were also like doing that. I feel like the main issue with that was like, yeah, there's a lot of fertile land in Europe that enabled a lot of civilization to occur because there was crops that can be harvested and made. And then also, I mean, yeah, it's in an environment where it's, like, people can also, like, just chill. And also a lot of other previous empires were, like, that also probably influenced it. But also, yeah, that's what I mean. Like, they were more, like, yeah. So I'm agreeing with what you were saying about geography being one of the main issues with, like, civilizations connecting in that regard. Uh, But, yeah, I'm just saying that, like, comparing it to, like, Brazil is, like, they're very, like different they could have advanced a lot more even if they were still separated i know like the united states there's still that huge barrier with like the west coast and the the east coast you know and that barrier could be the equivalent of like the amazon rainforest and like other parts of south america i'm just saying that specifically that bear there's there's certain barriers everywhere in regards to like wherever you are but also i'm saying that like because the United States had like such a head start, the other countries of South America also could have benefited and also been in a similar position. They just weren't in that position. And they didn't have that opportunity as the United States. And then they were just like, whoever is in the top, the United States specifically, ends up doing a Panama Canal situation where they end up controlling the other countries and making them do more than what they want and that limits their progression in society and as a civilization so that's all i was like trying to portray yeah yeah i don't know to me to me that's not fair you know because like the you also can make the argument that humans could have thrived a lot more millions of years ago if the dinosaurs weren't so big and scary but if the dinosaurs just let us do our own thing and didn't eat us, who knows what could have happened those caveman days. But they're dinosaurs. Well, that's they're just like making this is making an obscure argument nation. for like any topic for anything that could normally happen in, in real life. <laughs> I'm just talking about specifically for like, you know, the United States, like you were saying like how geography played like a huge role yeah. and I was saying like, yeah. 
The United That's what States. I'm saying is the United States is the dinosaur. We're the dinosaurs. It's okay, but like, you know, what was the difference that made the dinosaurs compared to us? If that's your case, then. What do you mean? Like, if the United States is the dinosaurs, then what is us? And why did we become us? And why did the dinosaurs become dinosaurs? I'm saying metaphorically we are the dinosaurs. I'm also I'm using that metaphor, yeah. We, we, we rule the world. I mean, I, I'm using is. the same like, metaphor, sorry, yeah. Yes, yeah, like, yes. If we weren't the dinosaurs, if we were nice, but, then maybe the South Americans could have gone a little bit more ahead. But we're the dinosaurs. So... Okay, that doesn't necessarily answer the question. That's just saying a different situation. I'm just saying, like, you know, even though South American countries benefited from all of the technology they received, I'm saying they could have done better because the United States is a pure example of what they could have been based on colonization because throughout any col any any country that has been colonized the United States did the best because of just how they've been and I'm saying that as an example for like how any country could have been so I'm just saying that for like you know well, yeah the US had the advantage of guns germs and steel okay but so did a lot of South American countries, did they not? No, they did not. They did not have guns? Not. They were not colonized we, by Spain they, and had guns? Had the, and They had the guns we allowed them to have. Yeah, they that's the same the exact thing as... Them to have. And they did not have the germs. We still killed millions of them inadvertently with our... Uh, Mike, you know, that's the box. same exact thing what we did to a lot of Native American population in, in North America. Like, we killed a lot of, of Native Americans with germs. I am saying that the United States had a revolution a little earlier than a lot of the South American population, and that gave us the edge in terms of, like, conquering other areas. Yeah. And that, and that saying, was the only benefit. But it's I'm like... Saying, I don't think that... If they, if they revolted earlier, I don't think they would have had a chance. If they revolted earlier, who knows what they would have done. I mean, like, there was a, there was a lot of things going on during the American Revolution. Like, France was also backing the you know england so that was another case i mean they weren't backing they were fighting england so they wanted yeah. to back the united states against england I think, I think, so there's I, like I a believe, lot of other factors but i'd have to look it up i believe that the the uh it was the french that assisted in the south american revolutions as well yeah yeah they I'd did no I, wait I know it's, you oh okay okay i i because I, I i know the one who like spearheaded like a lot of the liberation was simon bolivar and he was from south america but he fought with napoleon well i know it wasn't as great as england because yeah. france and england's rivalry is a lot bigger than south america specifically spain versus france their rivalry so I know that France actually got in debt because of a lot of the wars with England. Uh, so did England. I, yeah, yeah, it's so did England. That, but it's arguable that a I large don't know why the American Revolution I, even happened in the first place. Yes, yes, the, but I don't the, know. I don't know if France got in debt because of a, a conflict with South America. Like I don't mm. think they they got into that much debt because of a conflict with South America. Did you imagine if the, if we were British, what if what if the French what if we never revolted, like be, what if the French Indian War never happened, the England never needed our money, they never taxed us to oblivion, they gave yeah, us then we would still be a, then we would still be a colony of England, which is what would have happened to all the other South American countries with. Spain, and that's what did happen. It's like they weren't taxed as much because they weren't at war with France. So that's what ha ended up happening. And like South America still remains for a large part like constituents of South of of Spain because there was no big battle before that with like England and France. That's what it really happened between the American Revolution. The Americans were getting taxed because of that. Yeah. So it's I mean, just like. We we should make a history channel. We should make a history channel, yeah. This, I'm down with that. A, I like history. history. This is the history podcast. The history yeah, pod. yeah. Yeah. But that's all I'm saying, yeah. 
All right. Do you want to end the podcast? Uh, sure. Don't do heroin. Right. Don't do opioids. You gotta do cocaine. Just be safe about it. All right, kids. Thank you guys for listening and watching. And uh, yeah, this has been episode two of Carbo Load. So yeah. All right. This has been Jacob. Hi, guys. This has been Mike, too. You're supposed to say and Mike. And Mike. And there you go. All right. Take care, guys.